Two Man Tuesdays. My name is Kevin. This is a hammer, and it is Tuesday. Um, so you might be wondering why does Kevin have a hammer and his handy uh, tape measure? That's because we have an example about carpentry. But before we get to that, um, we're talking about the anatomy of an argument, and basically the terms that go uh, or the terms that go along with speaking about arguments. And I see lots of students confuse some of these terms and they use them interchangeably. So I just want to emphasize what these things mean, what they can be. Um, it's also useful too because the GMAT will interchange a lot of these terms in the questions. Um, so if you can know a lot of synonyms for these words, that will be helpful as well. All right, let's get started. An argument is not a conclusion. Those are two different things. I see students sometimes say argument and conclusion to mean the same thing. They are different. An argument contains a conclusion, and it contains a premise, and it contains assumptions. Everything that's there is the argument. It's all of this stuff. The conclusion is only one piece of the puzzle. It's an important part of the puzzle, but it is not the puzzle itself. So, the conclusion is the main idea, it's the purpose, it's the plan, it's the thing that the author wants you to believe, it's what you're being convinced of. Um, so, it can go by a lot of different names in sort of the realm of critical reasoning and uh, formal arguments. The conclusion is um, what everything builds towards. It's what's uh, the purpose of the entire argument, um, and it's what you're being convinced of. Great. A conclusion is nothing without premises. Premises are the support. It's the things that the author gives you uh, to help you believe the statement that is the conclusion. And almost anything can be a premise, which is kind of crazy to think about because some things are better premises than others. And that's why if you're looking to weaken or strengthen something, strengthen an argument, go to the premises. Think about how you can alter the premises to strengthen or weaken the conclusion. So when you're weakening and strengthening an argument, you're not actually doing anything to the conclusion. You're not changing this. You're changing this. So premises can be beliefs. They can be... I knew that was going to happen. Evidence, support, data, other conclusions. You can have other conclusions as premises. Sometimes in the bold face argument, you'll see there will be like a midway sort of temporary conclusion that builds to even bigger conclusion. So other conclusions can be premises. Ideas, studies, statistics, um, opinions can be premises. It doesn't matter. Okay, the last part of an argument is the assumptions. The assumptions as you can see, are not written. There's nothing there. That's because the assumption is assumed. That means they just accept, the author just accepts that you're going to believe all these other things when uh, he tells you or she tells you the conclusion. So an assumption is always unstated. It's always unwritten. If it's written, then it's a premise. It's no longer an assumption. So all of these things could be assumptions if they're not written into the argument. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. This is a critical reasoning question from the official guide, uh, and it's question number 115, 115, and it says, guidebook writer, so this is what the guidebook writer said, I have visited hotels throughout the country and I have noticed that in those built before 1930, the quality of the original carpentry work is generally superior to that in hotels built afterwards. Clearly, carpenters working on hotels before 1930 typically worked with more skill, care, and effort than carpenters who have worked on hotels built subsequently. Okay, very straightforward, typical argument. Our premises, they happen to be at the beginning. One premise we could say is that this person visited hotels. There's a premise. Um, that he's visited hotels throughout the country. 
He has seen hotels built before 1930 and after 1930, so that's a premise. Um, and a very important premise is that the carpentry work is generally superior to that in hotels built afterwards. Another important premise. So, what is the conclusion? We have a great signal word here, clearly. Um, anytime you see the word clearly, it is clearly signaling a conclusion. Carpenters working on hotels before 1930 typically worked with more skill, care, and effort than those afterwards. So that's our conclusion. Um, the assumptions for this argument, there, every argument has tons and tons of assumptions. Um, so, for example, um, one assumption is that this writer has seen enough hotels before 1930 and after 1930 to make this conclusion. Also, we'd have to assume that the hotels he saw are representative of the hotels built before 1930 and after 1930. Um, we'd also have to assume that a guidebook writer can be a good judge of what is good carpentry. Um, we would also have to assume, in order for the conclusion to be true, that no one else affects the skill, care, and effort that a carpenter puts into their work. For example, like a manager, or the owner of the building, or the people paying the carpenter to do what he or she is doing. Okay, so that's it for the argument. There's definitely more assumptions, and I encourage you to think of more. But I want you to walk away from this video knowing the difference between an argument and a conclusion, knowing what a conclusion is, a premise, and an assumption. Now you know these words. Now you know some of the words that are used um, interchangeably with premise, and you'll be able to navigate those critical reasoning questions a lot better. All right, I am done. That's it, that's all I got. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Uh, we always like to hear from our students and to get feedback because we're always looking to improve. Um, and I will see you next Tuesday. Be excellent to the universe. Bye-bye.